What the hell is anti-lag, and why is it so important to turbocharge rally cars? As usual, let's go back and delve into the history before we can start looking at the answer. As most of us know, turbocharging didn't really come into the World Rally Championship until the early 1980s with the Audi Quattro and four-wheel drive. Now I'm not going to get too in-depth in turbocharge as well, unless you guys want me to do a video on it, then uh, leave a comment below and I'll get onto it. So how do they work? Well, a turbocharger is a very clever piece of engineering, and effectively it's just two miniature fans joined together by a common shaft. Basically one side is the exhaust side, which is driven by the exhaust gases from the engine, and the fan on that side is called a turbine wheel, and on the other side of that shaft there's an inlet side called a compressor wheel, which is, again is another tiny fan. And basically they spin at very, very high RPMs. So to produce compressed air, which is called boost, they need to have exhaust gases escaping the engine at very high RPMs. So what happens is when a driver takes their foot off the accelerator to say slow down for a corner or change gears, in that time the engine RPM drops, which means the gas leaving the engine drops, and that means that the turbocharger slows down. It then takes a second or a few seconds for the turbocharger to spool up again when the driver puts their foot back on the accelerator, and that time difference is called turbo lag. And so in a rally scenario where we're always racing the clock, turbo lag can cause loss of time. Now it might only be split seconds here and there, however that can add up depending on the stage. Say a 20 kilometer stage, you could lose say one to two seconds a kilometer, and by the time you've got to the end of the stage that could be 20 seconds. The problem wasn't fully solved until the 90s when anti-lag was invented. Now believe it or not, anti-lag actually isn't the bolt-on system of any description. For the most part, it's actually programmed into the car's engine management system, and the tune is known as a map. And speaking as a general example, that map needs a specific set of conditions for the anti-lag to actually start working. Let's just say you're roaring along a stage doing 5,000 RPM and you're approaching a corner, you start downshifting and braking, which means you're taking your foot off the accelerator. The engine management system senses that the throttle is closed, and the RPMs are up, and so it fires the anti-lag part of the map. Now what it does is, the injectors and the spark plugs are fired on the exhaust stroke. So what happens is, the very rich fuel mixture is ignited in the combustion chamber, however, instead of producing power in the engine, it actually exits the engine as a pressure wave, and that pressure wave inside the exhaust manifold then keeps the turbocharger spinning at full RPMs to produce boost. The sensation of that is the backfiring and the flames out of the exhaust. And from the driver's point of view, what it means is, when you lift off the accelerator and then put your foot down again, there's no lag, you have maximum boost all the time. Okay, so we've looked at how anti-lag works and the advantages of it. However, there's no such thing as a perfect system and there are some disadvantages as well. Anti-lag is actually quite brutal. All of that backfiring inside of the engine can cause extra wear and damage to the engine and turbo, and the turbo is machined to extremely fine tolerances. It also produces intense heat. It's not uncommon to have the turbocharger glowing bright red under the bonnet with the anti-lag. So therefore, the car's cooling system, lubrication system and induction system, so the intercooler, all have to deal with that extra heat. Anti-lag uses a lot more fuel as well. Obviously, you've got the engine using the fuel when you've got your foot on the accelerator, but it's also using raw fuel when you've got your foot off the accelerator. So depending on the car and how it's tuned, sometimes the fuel consumption can be doubled. There's a couple of other disadvantages to anti-lag, and they're things that you probably wouldn't think of. It's actually to do with the brakes and the transmission. Anti-lag doesn't produce any engine braking or vacuum. So in other words, when you lift your foot off the accelerator, the car actually doesn't slow down. When the anti-lag's firing, it keeps on driving forward, which means that you have to work the brakes a lot harder to slow the car down. Also, it means that there's no vacuum, and therefore you're not getting any vacuum assist. So generally, in cars running anti-lag, the vacuum booster is removed as well. So there you go. To take advantage of anti-lag, you have to cop some disadvantages as well. However, it does sound and look awesome. So hopefully I've cleared up what is anti-lag. It's quite a complicated system to explain. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and I'll catch you again soon. Cheers.